Are you struggling to land an engineering internship? Or maybe you're feeling a little overwhelmed by the sea of applicants and not sure how you can stand out. Well, if this is you, you're probably not alone because I've been getting tons of questions around this. So I decided to make a video about this to reveal the truth behind engineering internships and also debunk seven major myths that could be holding you back. Here is the full picture of what I'll be talking about today, ranging from internship pay, age, your status, plus the best timing and strategies to land these internships. Now you can use a timestamp below to jump around to different myths, but you probably want to stick around for the full thing to get a full picture. And especially the last myth is really crucial because it reveals the strategies to actually land internships. If that sounds good, let's dive into myth number one. Internships don't lead to full-time jobs. This is not true. Internships are the best way to secure a full-time job. I know this firsthand because I started recruiting for interns back in 2012 as a software engineer at WhatsApp, and then as a software engineering manager at Meta after the acquisition. Now, what you may not realize is that most tech companies do want to convert as many interns as possible to full-time roles, because that's really the whole reason of doing internships. They want to attract and evaluate good talent. And according to levels.fyi, the conversion rates can even be over 70% in some cases. This is really the best way for companies to find out if someone is a good engineer or a good fit for the company because internships are the perfect opportunity to evaluate talent in a practical hands-on way. So now that we understand that internships do lead to full-time jobs, let's talk about myth number two. But before we move on, let's play a little game. If you are surprised by the last myth, or if you find any of the myths coming surprising, go ahead and hit that like button. This is not only a fun game, but also it's going to help other people who might be struggling with landing internships so that this video can reach them as well. Now, next myth is myth number two, internships do not pay. What do you think about this one? You might be surprised to learn that big tech internships almost always pay and some of the pay can be really good. Take Radix training, for example, is the highest salary reported on levels in the past summer and their PhD level quant role got paid $160 an hour. If you're an undergrad, Amazon's highest pay was almost $90 an hour in New York City. But more importantly, even startups pay really well. Take companies like Kensho, which was the highest reported pay for startups this past summer at $70 an hour. And I like to talk about these higher end of salaries because I want you to aim high. I remember also struggling with internships when I was in school. And if you're interested in learning more about internship pay, including housing bonuses or other perks, leave a comment and I can make another video about that. Now let's look at the next myth, number three, big tech hires based on age. Okay, consider this for a moment. This is a really important point because it is actually illegal in the United States to hire based on age. So after your first job, most employers won't even ask about your graduation date and you can drop your graduation date on your resume, no questions asked. But more importantly, when it comes to internships, the key requirement is that you need to be a student. Age really doesn't matter. As long as you're enrolled in school, you are eligible to apply. Now then I always get questions. What about self-taught or bootcamp people? You might feel like you're at a disadvantage. And here again, you're asking the wrong question because you should be asking what other opportunities are available for you. So one great option would be rotational programs, which are specifically designed for people with non-traditional backgrounds, meaning boot camps and self-taught engineers. But since this video is about internships, I can talk more about rotational programs in another video. If you're interested, feel free to leave a question in the comment. Also, startups tend to be more flexible in their hiring process which can be a great fit if you're not a traditional student, or maybe you're not even interested in big tech. And in some cases, startups may even offer better experiences for you where you can learn and have more hands-on experience and build better relationships and connections. Okay, so let's say you are a student. Even then, not all students are created equal. So there are different types of students. Are you an international student, an undergrad, a master's or PhD? Because the types of opportunities available for each type of student may be different. So let's break it down. Myth number four, international students can't get internships. What do you think? First, let's clarify what we mean by international students. So if you're studying in a country 
and applying for an internship within the same country, you are considered an international student. However, if you're studying in one country and trying to apply for a job in a different country, that's a completely different situation. And based on my experience as a software engineering manager at Meta in both the US and working in the UK, I have seen a lot of international students absolutely do get internships if they're applying for jobs within the country they're studying in. For example, F1 students in the US can work through OPT, optional practical training, which allows them to work up to 12 months. Now, this is really simple for companies because your school will be the one handling most of the paperwork, unlike the H1B process, which puts more of the burden on the company where they have to do all the paperwork. However, if you're looking for internships in a different country from where you are studying, that gets trickier because of the whole visa issue. For example, if you check out this post from Meta, the minimum qualification listed is that you must be able to obtain work authorization in the country of employment at the time of hire and maintain an ongoing work authorization during employment. So if you don't have the school to back you up, it might be pretty tough for you to acquire this visa. Now I'm not an immigration attorney, so for visa details, I recommend you talk to your school's office. They know the process inside out. So regardless of whether you're an international student or not, you also need to think about the timing of the application. Which brings me to myth number five, you can apply to internships anytime you're in school. Now this is completely wrong. Timing is really everything when it comes to internships. Big tech companies generally focus on hiring undergraduate juniors, master students, and PhD students. So you wanna make sure to research this early and understand your eligibility to maximize your chances. For example, let's look at the same job post from Meta. Another minimum qualification is that you're currently enrolled in a full-time degree-seeking program and in the process of obtaining a bachelor's or master's degree in computer science or related field. If you look at the preferred qualification, it says demonstrated software engineering experience from a previous internship, work experience, coding competitions, or publication. You'll notice that many internships require prior experience, which leads to the question, how do you get that initial experience if you need prior experience to get internships? Well, if you're a freshman or a sophomore, companies like Meta have another program designed just for you. It's called the Meta University, and it has its own set of qualifications. So if you look at the job post for Meta University, the minimum qualification says, you must be a current first year or second year college student studying at a four year university. And a preferred qualification is that first year students must have completed one college level CS course by the end of the first year in college, and they will accept AP courses from high school. Second year students must have completed two college level CS courses. If you're a freshman or a sophomore, the best bet is to apply to these special programs. Every big tech company has a program similar to this under different names. So do your research by searching for internships on career websites. Another interesting thing is that if you look at all of the internships on the Meta career website, there are 93 internship positions available, but almost all of them will say PhD. But don't be discouraged by this because this doesn't mean that they are only hiring PhDs, but the job posting for PhDs are just more specific. So for juniors and master's students, there is just one broader internship role under one job post, but they hire just as many interns, if not more, with just this one job posting. So your chances are still pretty good. Also, again, consider applying for smaller companies and startups which may be a little bit more flexible and they can really provide great opportunities and experiences for you. So I actually didn't know about this prior experience thing. I didn't know I would need prior experience to apply for internships junior year. So when I was applying for internships junior year, I did not have any prior experience working in tech. I did have part-time jobs, but none of them were tech related. But luckily I did manage to land an internship for a tiny three person startup. And the startup didn't really go anywhere, but it did give me really valuable experience. 
and I think it was one of the best stepping stones in my career. And I know it can be really frustrating and that's why I'm sharing this video. So I hope you find this helpful. Now, once you know your eligibility, you also need to know when to apply, which brings me to the next myth. Myth number six, you apply for summer internships in the summer. If you're waiting until the summer to apply for summer internships, you're already too late. Most big tech companies recruit summer interns from October to December of previous year. So if you want an internship next summer, that means you should be preparing for it right now. But if you happen to miss this timeline or if you applied and you didn't get the job, you can still apply for open roles at startups and smaller companies past December, or there could be some last minute positions that opened up even for larger companies or any company really without a formal program may be hiring throughout the year. So for smaller companies, you can try cold emailing an employee or a recruiter with your resume. And even if you don't get an internship right away, you may be able to build a connection and this could help you when you're looking for a full-time job later. Okay, so you want to apply now, but how do you apply for the internships? Myth number seven is you need projects to land internships. I'm sure you've heard of this before. So projects are great for building skills and learning, but they're not the key to landing internships. The keys to landing an internship are things like mastering lead code and networking. For big tech companies, there's no way around lead code. If you don't want to do lead code, you can apply to startups or other companies that don't require lead code. And that I don't make the rules, but if you want to play the game, you kind of have to follow them or you find a different game that suits you. So it's your choice whether or not you want to prepare for lead code, but you probably would want to do networking whether you're applying for big tech or startup. You wanna take full advantage of your school's resources as part of your tuition. Most schools host career fairs in the fall, you wanna attend them. And if there are any talks or events hosted by student clubs, attend those. Look for any engineering conferences. Sometimes they even give you a scholarship to attend. You wanna attend all of these. Why is that? Because recruiters are paying money to be at these events. Or maybe they're sponsoring pizza or refreshments at the events, all with the goal to hire people. So they're investing their time and money in finding new talent and that's really the biggest value of going to school, access to these opportunities. So I really wanna encourage you to take full advantage of them. But even if you do everything I've just mentioned, there is still one crucial element that you will need before attending any of these events, which would be a bulletproof resume. So you wanna make sure your resume is top-notch and presentable, before attending these events. And if you're not sure how you can do that, you can check out this video for tips. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next. 